so with whether it's usually the pilots um that keep an eye on it they have very fancy radars and very fancy screens that tell them a lot about the weather um including incoming weather as well and they can either be okay and good to go um they can be on a weather ask so it may be a bit iffy in some areas because the bases aren't necessarily right next to where the incident is sometimes the crews can they have a bit of a transit especially the fixed wing aircraft for example they they are our national asset they don't have any regional limits they can go anywhere um so it may be okay where the force is requesting us but at base it can depend a lot on the cloud base specifically and it's different day and night as to the the limits and what they can and can't lift for in terms of the cloud base so how low or how high the cloud up is up in the sky um things like fog and mist of course when it gets into your autumn winter can play a big part as well um as can snow and the horrible rain that comes in winter it's not to say that we can't fly in that weather it is purely due to you know, how the visibility is. Um, obviously, we want to look after the crew's safety and they are legal operational limits. We, we have to stay within those. The crews have to stay within those. Um, and they are pretty good at keeping us up to date with if they are online, offline, on an ask. And sometimes they may need to just go away for five minutes, check the weather, have a chat with the pilot and then come back to us. Sometimes it might pass through within 10, 15 minutes, at which point they'll just monitor the job, keep an eye on it, keep an eye on the channel for any updates. It's only if that cloud base is very low and it affects visibility that they legally cannot lift. And that's the point where, of course, the declines do happen. And it's not that we don't want to fly or we don't want to come and assist a force. It's just legally we cannot. And that comes into your CAA regulations as well.